Is there a substance in these words? My lack of interest is slowly but surely becoming evident. Pain is the accommodation for these thoughts and I am an overstaying resident. Leap into me. Allow me to jump your king in draughts or knots and crosses, anything, absolutely anything to take my mind off everything. We were the power couple. We were the ones that Knowles made reference to and I was dangerously in love with you. But that goes Beyonce. Drunk in love, they'll call it. And I was drunk on your lies and your deceit. And looking back on it, and I know you would have been the death of me because it felt like I was dying in the depth of your palms. S.O.S. Someone, save me. Though my mouth was mute and my thoughts unheard, my body language would often betray me. Unequally yoked and I was equally choked by your frequent approach of sympathy. It was not your half-hearted sorries nor Instagram approvals that I was seeking. I was needing for you to look between the lines of my poems and see that I was pleading. Put down the debit card, look into my eyes and see that I was bleeding. Internally. Bleeding. Because what we have done is equivalent to murder. And every time I lay down in your bed of immorality, I cursed you and vice versa. So let me ask you this. Is this the woman that God has ordained me to be? Every time my material unravels before those lustful eyes, is it a Proverbs 31 woman you see? Hold that thought. Because the truth is you cannot lie to a liar. And in the first place, I never should have been yours to admire so unfruitful that we would bow to physical desires and the physical requires you to thrive off this flesh. So when I made a decision to die to this flesh, only then could I start to see Life in its best form. I felt as dirty as the soil that we were sitting on. How can the same grass that people are spitting on become our place of intimacy? Then instantly I knew what it meant. I knew what it meant when my brother said that. We accept the kind of love that we think we deserve. I didn't think to preserve the very little decorum that I had left. It's like I had left all my values in this park. But let's take this back to the genesis of things. When I brought Adam to this garden, forbidden fruits laid on my chest, my heart was just too hardened. Your hands were laid upon my breast, my heart was beating hard and I could see that though this fed your flesh, your spirit man was starving. But so was mine. So, spiritually malnourished, constantly seeking the type of male who would make this flower flourish. Seeking in vain my eyes start to strain because I forgot the promise that I made to my mum at 13 years old but it wasn't about her to be honest. I started seeking the Lord for his wisdom and glory. But deep down inside I couldn't bear it. I didn't want to see myself the way that El Shaddai saw me enslaved by the sin I was in too deep. And my spirit was willing but my flesh was weak so I plastered my thoughts with infected intention. With no thought for Christ and his divine intervention. I started to hide from my old friend repentance, content in my lies and intentionally hurting myself. Tired. I was tired so I used Psalm 3 as a pillow for my burdens. But how do I tell him I'm no longer a virgin? How do I tell him I died to his word just to live for the world and my life has no purpose? Then I remembered he, he's a know-it-all God, yeah. You know it all God, you seem to know it all God. Hosanna in the highest because you love me at my lowest and through the talents you have given me, I'll show it. And I'll never ever stop till every knee drops and every single mouth and heart and soul declares that you alone are God. But this is not like anything your ears have ever heard. Because this is not a poem, nor is it spoken word. This is my testimony. This is my journey. And though I had to mention those who hurt me, they do not deserve any further recognition. Plus I despise repetition. This right here was just to declare that he has been faithful. And I'd much rather die than slip again. I sipped with Satan and my life wasn't tasteful. But he's still faithful. Lord, what did we do to deserve it? We were given your grace for free, we didn't earn it. 
there are no flaws in Jesus. He is perfect. He's perfect. He's perfect and you are wonderfully made in his likeness. But not to be fornicators, thieves and self-righteous. We are more than the conqueror. Fighters, console one another on your walks with Christ. It's your business. There's no room for Kermit. And the Lord has given you this permit so we can stop the limitations. Take up your cross, we are the chosen generation.